Hi, I'm Bill Patzert. I spent more than 50 years at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory studying climate change and global warming. Much of what the public really knows about climate change and global warming comes from Hollywood. Today, we're going to dissect a few films and see where Hollywood gets it right and wrong. Day after tomorrow, global warming has melted the polar ice caps. If you do not act soon, it is our children and our grandchildren who will have to pay the price. But they got the science wrong. What we saw in New York City, the oceans rise. It's exceptionally photogenic, but the size is totally unrealistic. It's too immediate. Global warming gets you slowly. This instantaneous switch into a mini ice age over a few days, the time scale's all wrong. We're not cooling. We're warming. The scientist, played by Dennis Quaid, dramatically draws a line across the center of the United States. Everyone south of that line. It's not the way it happens. But there are a lot of things I liked about it. A couple of ironic things. One of them is mass migration out of the United States. And they are wading across the river illegally into Mexico. There will be mass migrations as we look into the 21st century, and particularly in the American Southwest. Now, one of the things they really got wrong is one of the least likely places in the world to have devastating tornadoes is Southern California. Day after tomorrow, they played for the camera, not for the science. Let's give it a C minus. Our next film is 2012. Massive solar eruption impacts the core of the Earth, setting off a geologic catastrophe in the crust, essentially destroying civilization. It's definitely a dud. Global warming has almost no impact on the Earth's crust. It's a surface manifestation. These are two different animals. San Andreas Fault is shifting. Here in California, one of the big forces of nature that hangs over all our heads here is the San Andreas Fault. It's moving, it's powerful, and potentially very destructive, but it's totally decoupled from climate change. On a popcorn scale, we're gonna give it an A+. But on a science scale, it's a D minus. Interstellar really asks the core question. As population explodes, as we change our climate, as we devastate our ecosystems, what is the future of mankind on planet Earth? And it's interesting how they use the past as a metaphor for the future. Expanding droughts. You didn't expect this jerk that was giving you this food to turn on you like that and destroy you. Starvation on a mass scale. We ran out of food. The world needs farmers, good farmers. Nelson's torching his whole crop. They're saying it's the last harvest for okra ever. The thing that really gets you is not sea level rise, it's the lack of water and the lack of food due to overpopulation. But six billion people, just try to imagine that. And every last one of them trying to have it all. How does the human race deal with that? And if we don't want a repeat of the excess and wastefulness of the 20th century, then we need to teach our kids about this planet. We're not meant to save the world. We're meant to leave it. There's not a planet in our solar system that can sustain life. Or any nearby solar system. Big question, great flick, an A+. Mad Max, although it paints a grim picture of a post-apocalyptic future. There's something very contemporary about it. I am your redeemer. It is by my hand you will rise from the ashes of this world. The fundamental resource, essentially, that sustains civilization, which is water, is being controlled by a megalomaniac who's misogynistic, totally lacking in empathy for the people that he rules. There is something really prophetic about Mad Max. We see the rise of dictators across the planet and resources become more and more limited. Most of the earth has turned into a desert. Now, we're seeing that on a smaller scale today. Do not, my friends, become addicted to water. It will take hold of you and you will resent its absence. I'm giving this movie an A-plus on many levels. Myself, I go back and look at this many, many times. I think the message from all these movies, we have to be careful who we vote for. We have to wean ourselves off fossil fuels and onto renewable energies. This is the home planet. There is no planet B.